Many times when we think about trauma, we think of medical trauma, the type of trauma that occurs when we get into a car accident. And while that is a type of trauma, there is another type of trauma that goes unseen and sometimes not even spoken about. And that is psychological trauma. Psychological trauma can be defined as an event or series of events that is experienced by an individual as harmful, either physically or emotionally, and has lasting effects on that person's well-being. When we think about lasting effects on someone's well-being, we're talking about things like physically, psychologically and emotionally, socially, relationally, financially, and so much more. It's important to keep that in mind when we think about trauma, because trauma doesn't just show up in the form of a wound. It can show up in many different forms. Trauma can also be sustained on an individual basis or on a collective basis. Individually, that means that something has happened in my own personal life, whether be it just by myself or as a result of someone else that has impacted me. But on a collective basis, what trauma looks like is the impact, specifically psychological impact, on the way that a group of people think as a result of something harmful that has occurred. Now, group trauma is pretty expansive. It can look like a family, a block, a neighborhood, a state, a region, a country, a continent, and maybe even a world. And it impacts the way that this entire group of people, this collective, navigates through trauma. Why is this important? Well, studies have actually shown that depending on when and how and how pervasive or how severe episodes of trauma are for a collective or a group of people, there is the possibility that the impacts or the effects of that trauma can be passed down through someone's biology to their offspring from generation to generation. Now, it's interesting when we think about that because that means that the impacts of wrongdoing or harm or hurt have been passed down through the genes of a parent into the children, almost like an inheritance. Now, when we put that into perspective of how marginalized and disenfranchised communities navigate through trauma, it gives us a purview, an understanding of what is going on with them when we see things that we deem inappropriate or behaviors that are disapproved. Why are things happening or why are they behaving that way? What a trauma-informed lens means is with everything that we've just discussed, understanding that trauma has the ability to impact the mind and body of an individual and collective trauma has the ability to, 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 to impact and shape the psyche of an entire group of people for generations, it helps us understand that we should have a particular view when dealing with people who've possibly been traumatized. It's not what's wrong with them. Instead, it's what has happened to them. We shift our perspective and allow ourselves to walk in the shoes of the individual, understanding that what we see on the surface may be indicative of something deep, a deep harm, a deep hurt, a threat that existed well before the interaction that you are having with that person. It's why it's so important for us to interact with people with that trauma-informed lens, with a sense of care and empathy, understanding, as we interact with people that have possibly been traumatized. I mean, there's biblical understanding for this as well. We have been called as a people to operate with compassion and care for our fellow neighbor. That doesn't mean that we always understand what has happened. Sometimes it's hard for us to fathom, but what it means is that we've opened up our minds to the understanding that the experiences of another person has had an impact on them that we can't grasp and we want to hold them and help them as they navigate through their own journey. This is why it's important for us to have a trauma-informed lens. Understanding that what we may see or identify on the surface has a story, has a narrative, has an experience that deserves to be heard, listened to, elevated, and validated. It's the only way that we are able to bring healing to people who are hurting. Transforming interactions that could be possibly harmful to someone else into interactions that are healing-centered and restoration-focused.